we believe that God is creator, not creation. There's a difference between creator and creation. Creator exists alone, needed no help, no assistance. Nothing aids God in his existence. But everything else needs help. We, list, we exist as human beings by a moral principle, male and female. Without that entity, we could not even exist. We need help because of our needing help. Oftentimes, we have to call on something that's much bigger and much greater than ourselves. See, sometimes we reach an impasse and our ability to solve our own problems. That's when God's help is so apparent. We say, hey, the act of now, the way the act of now, I mean, the alone do we worship, and the alone do we turn begging for assistance. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't help each other. No, but the kind of help that this is talking about is the help that comes to us when nothing else can help you. There's a time when you have to say, Mama, help me. Daddy, help me. Grandfather, grandmother, help me. You go all through the family. Then you, when you run out of that and those efforts, then you have to look outside and you say, police department, help you. And a minute, and all the time, we have to call the police, especially nowadays, because you're dealing with a lot of people who are ignorant. And the ignorance is not just among um, uh, none of us. Sometimes it comes among us. There's nothing wrong with our religion. But we have an analogy given to us by the man who spoke at the other program. He said, he used the, the, the uh, analogy of having a brand new, beautiful Cadillac car and an inexperienced driver behind the wheel who has an accident. But whose fault is it? Is it the car accident or is it the one that's driving? It's the person who's driving. So that's definitely we need to come back to our religion. We need to come back to, to the purity of religion and present Tawhi, the unity of God, as it should be presented. And the example of that was, was established in the lifetime of Prophet Muhammad Solomon. So he had social skills and he was able to work with people who did not believe exactly as he believed. Proof of it, the first Israel. First Hijra that took place um, by Muslim, the Hijra, the migration, was not the one that we commonly talk about and talk about the people, but the first Hijra was to the African, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Ethiopia and Abyssinia, where there would be Christian people <coughs> who Muslims of Cyprus. And still existing today is the Charter, what we call it, this isn't even Charter of you know, the Medina. Where the Prophet Muhammad, when he established the first society of Muslim, he established also freedom of religion, especially for those people who received the heavenly books and the heavenly religion who believed in the one God. This is history, and this is the education that we need to put out to the public. Yes, we are monotheistic people. We believe in Tawheed, and we are not to be extreme. In closing, let us remember. But Allah says in the Quran to us, let the Quran have the theme that there be no compelling in religion, that there be no compulsion, the truth stands out clear of compulsion. So, dear brothers and sisters, we could talk, but I think a better way of getting information or sharing information is through dialogue. But we're not just talking to people, but they're also talking to us. And, brothers and sisters, this is the most intelligent argument when you have a discussion. Going back and forth. That's the kind of argument that made El Islam so great in the past. Even the companions, sometimes they would disagree. They would say, I don't like that idea. You know, and what do we have? We have met there. So we have schools of thought. And they were not designed to divide us and to make sense. They were designed so that Muslims could come into a better understanding of Islam. So we can give it expression not only in our life, but in the society of Muslims and plan ultimately in a way that benefited the whole world. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum once again. Before I give it to my brothers, my new brothers, uh, brother David and Casey, 
I will, uh, I have something for them that I would like uh, Imam Khalil Akbar to pass to them. These are These are Shahada package. This has books and Musalla, Sajjada, and Quran translation. So Imam Khalil Akbar, please pass it to you to our guests, uh, brothers David and Casey. Thank you. Thank you. I asked uh, David and Casey to tell us, give us the knowledge of what brought down the interest towards Islam. And I gave them from some few questions as an outline to tell us so that inshallah we can also learn as to how we can spread this truth of Islam to people around us. So I would, and by the way I think already said that they are grandfather and grandson. And uh, mashallah we had a lunch together today, the wonderful people mashallah we enjoyed and we, they also enjoyed. And again, Thank you for coming and thank you for taking this opportunity to be with us and accepting this invitation to speak to us. So I invite Brother David as well as Brother Casey.